Hi, and thank you for watching this video. We are in the final months of 2018, and even though we have been given many signs over the past number of years, and as we watch how events are converging towards prophecies that are described to us in the Bible, it would seem that we have not quite reached the point yet indicated to us by Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5, where the following is stated. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. It saddens me to see the number of people, even fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, who fail to see the importance of the times that we live in, or have chosen not to heed the words of Paul, and those spoken by Jesus and Peter, instructing us to watch for the return of our bridegroom, which would be preceded by many signs. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Blessed are those servants, whom the Lord when he cometh shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself, and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober, and watch unto prayer. Given that we who are servants of Jesus are often instructed in the word by Jesus, Paul, and Peter to watch for the return of our bridegroom, it should immediately be evident from the instructions to watch that we would have difficulty to accurately determine the date on which we will meet our bridegroom. Therefore, we have to watch because we do not know well in advance when this will happen, and only as we approach this day and specific events that are associated with this day occur, would we know that it is time. In 1 Thessalonians 5, it is clear that an announcement regarding peace and safety would be associated with great destruction that will come over the world and the escape of some from the world that would also occur at the same time. Considering what is happening in the world today, there is one aspect that would seem to be clearly associated with the timing of this escape, as mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 5 and Luke 21. And that is what is known as the deal of the century. Donald Trump's Middle East peace plan, which he recently stated would be announced within two to four months, would seem to match what is described in 1 Thessalonians 5. On September 26th, he made the following statement. A new deal negotiated with Okay, Iran. yes, please. Uh, sir, uh, could I ask you, do you think you'll be releasing the peace plan in a matter of weeks, months? Could you give us some sort of time uh, frame? We'll have something. We have something very much in mind. It's moving along really well. I want to have, I want to have a plan, Steve, that is solid, uh, understood by both sides, really semi-agreed to by both sides before we start a negotiation. Yes, sir. I would say over the next uh, two to three to four months, something like that. That would be the, the time that I'd like to at least release the plan. It is a very complex situation, but I think we have some brilliant ideas, ideas that have never been thought of before, ideas that are good for both parties. And again, it has to be good for both parties. Okay? Thank you all. 1 Thessalonians 5 is also associated with a woman in travail which is about to give birth, and we know that this reference is clearly associated with the great wonder that appeared in heaven, as described to us in Revelation 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, and she being with child cried, travailing and birth and pained to be delivered. This sign had a very unique celestial representation in the heavens that occurred only twice in history, and of which the second instance was fulfilled on September 23, 2017. From what I can tell, chapter 12 of the book of Revelation 
covers the time from September 23rd, 2017 until the end of the millennium where Satan will once again be released to make war with the remnant of Israel and to corrupt the image of God as he had done during the days of Noah and which he will also do once again during the upcoming tribulation. Given that we have seen the alignment in the heavens in 2017 as described to us in Revelation 12, we have to realize that there is a lot more to come which had not happened yet at the time when this video was made. Revelation 12 continues to describe an interaction between the man-child represented by the planet Jupiter and the great red dragon which may very well also be represented by a celestial entity the same celestial body that caused a three-hour solar eclipse on the day that Jesus was crucified and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Knowing now that this vision that was given to John describes an actual celestial alignment, we should also be aware of the possibility that the very first prophecy in the Bible, having the same characters as depicted in Revelation 12 forming part of it, and which is found in Genesis 3, may also be describing a physical celestial interaction between two celestial bodies referred to as seeds in Genesis 3. There is a very strong possibility that the vision in Revelation 12 that was given to John goes hand in hand with the very first prophecy given to man by God as recorded in Genesis 3. This would also seem to be pointed out in a number of passages in the word which calls this the sealed up vision and prophecy. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. This understanding also confirms and supports another passage in the word of God where this vision and prophecy would represent a single and very important instance through which our Heavenly Father declares to us the end from the beginning. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. When we interpret what was written in Genesis 3 in the same way as we now know that the sign described in Revelation 12 represents an actual physical alignment in the heavens involving actual celestial bodies, this surely would be describing the end from the beginning. Given what we could expect to happen according to the description in Genesis, it is also part of our Heavenly Father's character to inform us of His secret events before they occur. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but He revealeth His secret unto His servants the prophets. So what information is Genesis 3 verse 15 providing us in addition to what is said in Revelation 12? From what I can see, it describes a collision between the bottom half of Jupiter identified as the seed of the woman in the celestial alignment that occurred in 2017 that will be removed or broken up through contact with another celestial entity's top part which is called the seed of the serpent. This interaction is described to us as follows. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. It would seem that our Heavenly Father also wanted to confirm this understanding to us by marking the heel of Jupiter that he intends to cut away 
during this impact by having the Comet Shoemaker Levy 9 draw a dotted line on the section that will be removed as part of this prophecy. This dotted line that was marked out on Jupiter's heel occurred 22 years ago when 21 fragments of the comet collided with the king planet. This would also bring into account some passages in the word of God that speaks about the heavens being shaken in the last days. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place, and the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens, and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land. Looking for, and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. These passages clearly show us that the day of the Lord is associated with both the earth and the heavens being destroyed by fire, and that God will have to create a new heaven and earth for people to live on in the millennium. It is also clear to see that something drastic will have to occur in the heavens, in order for the heavens to be dissolved at the second coming of Christ. If we continue to read Revelation 12, we see that the red dragon had a tail of stars that were cast onto the earth. And this is exactly what a collision with Jupiter would bring about, should a large celestial object that could cause a three hour solar eclipse as on the day of Jesus' crucifixion collide with the planet while the foreign entity is on a path towards the sun. This debris that will in time rain down on the earth will also fit in with the trumpet and bowl judgments that are described in the book of Revelation, as well as the vision of Nebuchadnezzar, where he saw the stone that was cut without hands, hitting the statue or the worldly kingdoms on its feet and filling the entire earth. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and brake them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. These aspects are very important to keep in mind, even though they have not occurred yet as there are several passages in the Word of God showing us God's plan as laid out in Revelation 12. For those who feel that such a collision with Jupiter is not possible because it is considered a gas giant, please apply Boyle's gas law to that theory and realize that it is impossible to have a ball of gas surrounded by vacuum. Coming back to the announcement of the peace plan, why is the announcement of the deal of the century such an important event to watch for? I'm of the opinion that the impact of this plan on the everlasting covenant that God made with Abraham is the reason why Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5 to keep an eye out for its announcement. Not only was Isaac's birth announced a year in advance, and this can be proven from scripture, but it was also associated with a covenant that God made with Abraham, which is known as the Everlasting Covenant. And this involves real estate, known as the land of Canaan. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. 
The deal of the century would seem to meddle with God's everlasting covenant that he made with Abraham. Over the past number of decades, every time that the rulers of Israel had relinquished partitions of God's land, which was promised to the seed of Abraham in exchange for a promise of peace, those who meddled with God's covenant suffered for doing so. In 1993, Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin played a leading role in the establishment of the Oslo Accords, which is basically a land in exchange for peace deal. Two years after agreeing to give up God's land in exchange for peace, he was removed from his position by an assassin. A number of years later, Prime Minister Ariel Sharon decided to completely withdraw Israel from Gaza and to give this portion of land to the Palestinians, once again in the hope that it would lead to peace. Less than four months after Israel's withdrawal from Gaza, Sharon suffered a hemorrhagic stroke, which left him in a coma for more than eight years. Those who rule Israel today do not seem to heed the warnings given to them in the word of God or by the examples that were made of previous rulers in response to their careless treatment of God's property. Should they agree to Trump's deal of the century, which will most likely involve parting God's land one final time in exchange for an empty promise of peace, the great destruction that is mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 5 may very well occur at the time when Israel enters into this agreement. So when could this possibly occur? Well, we know that Trump indicated in late September that he wants to reveal the plan within two to four months. How does this time frame fit in with what we read in the Word of God and with the passages that we have considered today? Now, I'm simply looking for patterns that could fit a possible scenario. And this is only speculation on my part. So if you get offended when watchmen look at future possibilities for the return of our bridegroom, you are welcome to stop the video at this point and go back to the things that you enjoy doing in this world. On the other hand, if you are as excited as I am and if you are looking forward to meeting our Savior in new glorified bodies in the air and leaving this sinful world behind and to see what Jesus prepared for us that required 2000 years of his time, you are welcome to continue to watch with me as we look at a few additional clues and possibilities that lie before us, matching the patterns that we find in the Word of God and serving as encouragement to those who may feel somewhat depressed at this moment. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for them that waiteth for him. I am of the opinion that all important events that form part of God's plan for the world will happen on a schedule that would match his feast days. The enemy would also not be able to change this and will have to follow the same schedule. And we know that the enemy also likes to mimic our Heavenly Father and that those who follow after Satan enjoys flaunting their plans before the unsuspecting masses without them knowing it. We have now passed the final four feast days for 2018 and it would seem that hope is beginning to fade for those who expected the rapture to occur in 2018, while people are presenting many different calendars which could still provide a small possibility of hope for the fulfillment of these days. For me it comes down to looking at God's signals that He provided for us in the heavens, which He created for the purpose of functioning as signals to point out His appointed times in their seasons. Revelation 12 signaled a very important date and looking at examples from the word we see a one-year warning of a supernatural birth provided to Abraham and Sarah in Genesis 17 and 18. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. And he said I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life and lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son, 
and Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. Is it not interesting that the deal of the century and the Revelation 12 sign combined could once again involve the aspects that existed between God and Abraham a little under 4,000 years ago, involving the birth of a child with a signal provided exactly one year in advance and a covenant that God made with Abraham as can be seen in Genesis 17. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. The Revelation 12 sign could have served the same purpose as the warning provided to Abraham, exactly one year prior to Isaac's birth. However, what do we make of the fact that we did not see anything occur on September 23rd in 2018? We have to go back to the Word of God in order to obtain an understanding, and it is important to consider all of God's Word when we search for answers, because everything that was written was intended for our understanding, not only certain sections from the Word of God. When we study the sequence of events given to us in Revelation 12, we see that the child that was born was caught up to God and to his throne. Now this is important to note as there are specific aspects that we need to consider when it comes to the birth of a male child when it involves the presentation of that newborn to God in his temple where his throne is positioned. The first clue we discover regarding this is found in studying the birth of Jesus who was presented to the Lord by his mother in the temple in Jerusalem. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. So before Jesus could be presented to the Lord after his birth, there was a waiting period required to allow his mother to undergo what is known as the days of her purification. This specific instruction is given to Israel in Leviticus, and this is what we read. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed, and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days. According to the days of the separation of her infirmity shall she be unclean. And in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised and she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. She shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary, until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. This passage specifically mentions that a woman may not present her child in the sanctuary until the days of her purification had been accomplished. This means that Jesus was only presented to the Lord in the temple in Jerusalem, 40 or 41 days after his birth. Knowing that we serve a God that does not change, this could be another pattern that may be repeated for the birth of the man-child mentioned in Revelation 12. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. The Revelation 12 sign may have served as a one-year warning matching what we read in Genesis 17 verse 21, while the birth of the man-child may have been fulfilled on the Feast of Tabernacles in 2018, in a fulfillment that is hidden from sight, because of the requirement of the days of purification that follows a birth, which is required prior to presenting a newborn before the Lord. If Jesus had to wait 40 days after his birth to be presented to the Lord in the temple in Jerusalem, then the man-child that is birthed from the woman described in Revelation 12 may very well also have to wait 40 days before it can be presented to the Lord before his throne in heaven. It just so happens that I recently had a look at the book of Jubilees, and although I am not considering it as inspired text or part of the canon, there is a very interesting passage that further confirms this understanding of the days of purification which is also mentioned here. 
This is what is translated from a section on paradise and humanity's fall into sin. And after Adam had completed forty days in the land where he had been created, we brought him into the garden of Eden to till and keep it, but his wife they brought in on the eightieth day, and after this she entered into the garden of Eden. And for this reason the commandment is written on the heavenly tables in regard to her that giveth birth. If she beareth a male child, she shall remain in her uncleanness seven days according to the first week of days, and thirty and three days shall she remain in the blood of her purifying. And she shall not touch any hallowed thing, nor enter into the sanctuary, until she accomplisheth these days which are enjoined in the case of the male child. So if the Revelation 12 sign that occurred on September 23, 2017 was a one-year warning pointing to the actual birth of the male child on September 23, 2018, having then a hidden fulfillment of the Feast of Tabernacles, and following the same pattern that we observed in Genesis 18, we should then allow another 40 days of purification until the child will be allowed to be presented to the Lord in His temple in heaven, according to what is written in the Word of God and in Leviticus specifically. Thou hast heard, see all this, and will not ye declare it? I have showed thee new things from this time, even hidden things, and thou didst not know them. Adding 40 days to September 23rd of 2018 takes us to a time frame of November 2nd to November 3rd of 2018. Now we know that the enemy also enjoys mimicking the prophecies provided by our Heavenly Father in His Word, and I look at all possible dates that the enemy puts out in the media that could possibly point to major events that they have been planning for many decades. It is interesting then to find that these dates are very strongly pointed at or hinted at by those who control the media and in a movie called Atomic Blonde which is a poor disguise for what I believe they are really hinting at we see the person representing the atomic bomb entering an airport in Germany. Her passport is then stamped showing us a very interesting date as can be seen in this image. She then exits the airport and gets into a car with this registration number. If we convert the letters to numbers we basically have the following which could point to November 3rd being the second instance of a 9-11 type event. The person who represents the atomic bomb is also pursued by a 1989 Porsche 9-11 Carrera. Do you think that both cars in these scenes have just been associated with 9-11 through some sort of coincidence? Could this be showing us the date on which our enemy planned to execute a second 9-11 type of false flag event that would involve a nuclear explosion in this case that will lead to great destruction and that this will coincide with the announcement of the Middle East peace plan or Trump's deal of the century? The same would then have to be asked about the November 2nd date stamp in the passport, which just happened to fall on the day when the male child would be permitted before the throne of God if a birth occurred on September 23rd according to God's instructions in His Word. Could this be the time when we who are watching and eagerly awaiting our escape from this world will be changed in the twinkling of an eye and receive new glorified bodies? with which we will leave this world behind and meet our Redeemer in the air. Of course, it is possible that even though this may seem like a very likely pattern, that it could just be a coincidence. And that is why we have to continue to watch, since we do not know the day or the hour at this point in time. But it is surely and rapidly coming into focus, and I am sure that any doubts will soon be removed from those who are watching but also from those who will find themselves left behind because they did not believe the words written to them by a loving Heavenly Father, or they chose to love their lives in this world above their Redeemer. In the movie I Pet Go 2, the clip ends with the Antichrist figure staring into a sunset. 
but there is also a date hidden in the scene. You will notice how the constellation of the scorpion is positioned when the sun is setting. This is pointing us to a very specific date and when we look at Stellarium we see a corresponding scenario occurring this year on December 9th which happens to be the last day of Hanukkah or the feast of rededication of the temple. So should nothing happen between now and the end of October there is in my opinion some very important pointers that point us to the first week of November. If we only consider the Revelation 12 signs timing and it would seem that from the information that the enemy is putting out that all could be accomplished for the Antichrist to have taken up his position in the world as Israel's Messiah by December 9th. So for those who have been disappointed over the past number of years and who are just about ready to give up hope, all I want to say is this, don't stop watching. We know that Trump's peace plan has a strong connection to what is written in 1 Thessalonians 5 and that this is also associated with the birth of a child. When that plan is about to be announced and those in positions of power attempt to divide the land that belongs to God and that was promised as part of an everlasting covenant to the descendants of Isaac, then look up and be ready for that is when great destruction will come over the earth. We have a window of time before us from the start of November until mid-December, which would match the patterns provided to us when God established the everlasting covenant with Israel. And if nothing happens, then we simply continue to search and ask our Heavenly Father for more wisdom. I hope that this video has encouraged you in a time where it would seem that those who have been waiting and watching for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ may have done so in vain. Keep your lights burning and look forward with excitement to the final lap in this race. Do not abandon your hope, for we will soon be united with our Lord and Savior, and what a blessing we have to look forward to. For those who look at this information and do not see the lateness of the hour, I pray that your eyes will be opened in time and that you will not find yourself left behind when all of this suddenly occurs, having had the opportunity to act on this warning. I don't want you to be left behind in a world where there will only be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There is unimaginable glory awaiting those whose desire is to be with their Redeemer. And why would you prefer this world over what He has prepared for you? Please help me to share this information in the video with others by sharing it on your social media accounts and YouTube channels if you have one. Thank you for taking the time to watch and may our Heavenly Father bless you and keep you until we are united with Him shortly. Until next time, God bless.